What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a Blender quick tip on how you can easily create some volumetric spotlights in your scene in order to enhance your 3D renders or live action shots. Adding some volumetric spotlights, or as some call them, God rays to your scene can really help enhance and bring out some depth in your 3D scenes and just make them a little bit more unique and cinematic. This technique that I'm about to share with you is fairly accurate and in comparison to some other techniques that you can use to create this effect is quite a bit faster to render in my experience. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is a quick work in progress render of a project that I started yesterday of these sci-fi set extensions. And it's a pretty simple setup here. As you can see, I've just added these sci-fi blocks in the background of our live action shot. I've added some rain, uh, some foreground uh, lens distortion and uh, you know other grungy elements to it. And as usual, I'll do a full scene breakdown of this shot on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But in this specific video, I just wanted to show how to create these kind of volumetric spotlights here. So this is one of the techniques that I'm going to use to enhance the shot even more. And I think I might add some more spotlights to the scene as well. I should mention that these procedural sci-fi blocks assets in the background of the shot that we're compositing in the shot are now added to our City Builder 3D asset-based add-on for Blender. So if you're interested in that add-on or if you have it already, these assets by Rui Huang are available to you in that Blender Market add-on download. Anyways, guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. I'm just going to show you what I've done here to create this spotlight effect and show you how to set it up fairly quickly. So this is our live action shot with our various sci-fi assets in the background. And as you can see, I've just animated the spotlight going around in a circle to add a little bit of life to the scene. So super simple setup and all the spotlight is composed of is just a actual spotlight lamp here as you can see here, and then a cone that I've added to the scene that's parented to the spotlight. And this cone has a volume scatter shader on it. So this is the simplest version of this effect. As you can see, if I go to rendered view really quick, you can see that it's just rendering the volumetrics in the cone here. So I've just parented the spotlight to the cone. And then as you can see here, I'll go ahead and turn off the display as wire, just display it as a solid. I've just added a cone to the scene. And this cone, if we go under the material tab, just has a volume scatter node on it with a fairly low density here. And the reason you're not seeing these assets is uh, just because our foreground is labeled as indirect only. So as you can see, if I turn the uh, sci-fi blocks back on, you'll see the spotlight interacting with the actual assets in the scene here. So super simple setup here. The standard way to do this, I'll go ahead and start from scratch here turn off our foreground elements. So the standard way to do this is to just add a, you know, whatever light you want to add to your volumetrics, just add a spotlight to your scene. And then you can add a cube, scale it up, put it around your scene. So let's treat this kind of box area as our scene here. Then you can go to the shading tab and add a new material to this cube. And rather than using a principled BSDF shader, we'll go ahead and delete that. You can either use a volume scatter node or a principled volume. I tend to use the volume scatter node more just because it's a little bit simpler. So I'll go ahead and add that to our scene and then add it to the volume material output. And now as you can see here, we have kind of this cloudy type uh, image and that's because this is a volume and we can just bring down the density to say 0.1, maybe even less, let's see, maybe 0.02. You can see that now the volume of this cube is just kind of a volume of mist. And right now we have an HDRI in our environment, which is letting it up. But if we actually select our spotlight here and increase this to say, we'll really crank it up here, maybe 500,000. Go to rendered view here. You can now see that the uh, spotlight is creating that God ray type effect. And then, you know, you can uh, maybe bring down the density a little bit more to maybe half select our spotlight. You can change the color of the spotlight. And this can be a really good technique if you want to surround your entire scene with volumetrics. However, one of the drawbacks to this technique is that now your entire scene has these volumetrics in it. And even though you're getting accurate lighting bouncing around this volumetric, it's just going to take a lot longer to render. So rather than adding an entire cube around your 3D scene and adding a volumetric shader to that, you can instead, if you want a little bit quicker render, just uh, add a cone to your scene and just line it up to your spotlight. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this. I'm just gonna eyeball it for the sake of this tutorial, but you obviously wanna be a little bit more precise with it. But if you just line up this CG cone to the edges of your spotlight beam here, if you just add that same material to this cone here. So I'll just press shift A, add a volume scatter shader, add this to the volume, go to rendered view. 
you'll see that you have a similar kind of volumetric effect. Obviously it's too dense right now, so I'm gonna bring this down to 0 0.02, just like the other one. So now you kind of have a similar style of volumetric effect. And what you can do is you can select your cylinder and then hold down shift, select your spotlight right after that, press control P, parent our cylinder to our spotlight. So now whenever your spotlight moves, your cylinder will move with it. So obviously you want this uh, cylinder to go out as far as you want your beam to go in your scene. So the light kind of fades off. So probably you want to, you know, scale it up at least a little bit, depending on how far you want your beam to go in the scene. And I also like to select the cylinder with the volume shader on it and uh, go to our object properties tab here and under viewport display I like to display it as a wire in our viewport just so it's a little bit easier to work with in the scene. So now as you can see here we can go to rendered view and we have a nice volumetric spotlight beam in our scene and it's not taking nearly as long to render as adding that cube of volume over our entire scene. Another thing you can do to kind of feather the edges of your spotlight here is go ahead and select your spotlight and then go to your lighting tab here and then just increase the blend here all the way up quite a bit. So you can see it's gonna give us a little bit more feathering on the outside edge. So I'll show that again, I'll bring it down to zero. You can see the edge is a lot more harsh here. It's not feathering out very much versus if it's all the way at one, you can see that it feathers quite a bit more. And also for your spotlight, of course, you can change the angle of your spot size. A lot of the time you want a smaller beam of light. So you can change that here to maybe 12 degrees. And now you can see we have a much more focused beam of light. And the rest of this volume is just being lit by our HDRI. So we do need to change our cylinder as well. So I'll just maybe scale it up on the Z axis here, scale it back down and just reposition it where our new smaller beam is. And there you have it. Now you have a beam of light that renders much faster in cycles than that standard technique of just adding a cube of volume to your scene. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Stay tuned for the Blender compositing breakdown of this shot. Subscribe if you're interested, and I will see you in the next video.